Hi, it's Dwyer. It's Tuesday, November 13th, 2018. Gamblersadvisory.com, a free site. Bettingangle.us, a free site. Now, yesterday, I made a post-fight video on the uh, Tony Bellew versus Alexander Usyk fight. And um, I made a statement that many of you disagreed with. Right? The statement was simply that on my scorecard, <clears throat> and I was rooting for Tony, right? I, I, uh, it was an odds play for me. I wanted the plus 450, which are the odds I got. <clears throat> I made the statement that in looking at the fight, as it happened live, I did not give Tony a round in the fight. And I was rooting for Tony. Right? Now, I understand that many people disagree with me, right? Um, Carl Froch, uh, David Hay, in other words, some big names disagreed with me. But, you know, this is our part, not my part, this is really our part. I view the subscribers as being part of all this. This is really our part of the internet. And I was just a bit surprised that um, people actually thought that Tony was hanging tough in the fight. Now keep in mind, as the fight was going on, the announcers on The Zone, which is where I watched the fight, they had Tony winning several rounds, right? One of them had Tony winning the first three rounds of the fight. So I thought that was highly unusual. And I asked for the scoring of subscribers in the comment section of the video. Well, you've responded, right? And what <laughs> what's amazed me, it's an interesting moment for me, is not only did many of you disagree with me, but many of you had Tony winning the first three rounds. I'm noticing in the comment section where people can put a thumbs up or a thumbs down. Someone will write something like, Dwyer, you're crazy or whatever, you're blind. Uh, I had Tony winning the first three rounds. And they'll have like 10 people agree with them. Click on the thumbs up. It's a bit astonishing to me. So let's talk about the scoring. Let's look at the CompuBox numbers. I had to go find the CompuBox numbers on this because I thought, gee, was, you know, was I distracted <laughs> watching this fight? What did I miss? And I believe it's central to boxing. We're obviously not going to agree on this, but it's central to boxing because as a community, all of us watch certain fights together, right? Kovalev, Ward 1, right? Ward hits the canvas, gets off the canvas, is down several rounds, and uh, Adam Booth thought he won the fight. Obviously, the judges thought he won the fight. Um, I'm still scratching my head, right? Saul Alvarez, Golovkin, both fights. The first fight, I see Saul Alvarez on his back foot, abdicating the pocket. He's moving away. Golovkin is chasing him. They call that a draw. Second fight, um, Canelo's in the pocket. No question about it. But I'm seeing Golovkin take a step back, hitting him with jabs every round. Right? It's not even... You know, where you look and you say, oh, this round, that jab was working. No, it's, wow, when's Canelo going to stop this jab? It's off that fight that they take Golovkin's title. Okay, fine. Right? Boxing's replete with scorecards that are curious. Even in fights where a guy wins by stoppage. You're looking at the scorecard. I know I was looking at the scorecard of Wilder, Luis Ortiz. And I thought, you got to be kidding me. You know, who other than Wilder's close family members would think that Wilder was even competitive in this fight, the first five rounds? Right? But yet the judges did. Now, I'm not saying the scoring here is as big of a travesty, my own opinion, as some of the other fights I've seen this year. Right? But I do think it's interesting because there's such a wide difference of opinion. Some of the people in the comment section actually agreed with me, right? Uh, one person said the only round Tony won was the first round, 
Another person said, look, the only round Tony won was the second round, <laughs> right? Okay, fair enough. Some of you did see the fight and thought to yourself, wow, Usyk's winning this fight before the stoppage. Well, understand, not one judge has Usyk ahead. So let's talk about boxing scoring here. And we'll bounce it off the compu box, right? Because it's an honest difference of opinion. No one here is saying Tony won the fight. Rather, we're just talking about the scoring in a fight that was a huge fight, right? I believe Tony's right. This is one of the biggest fights in cruiserweight history, right? First, going into the fight, you know what they say in baseball. Tie goes to the runner. You know, in boxing... If you're the champ and you tie with the other guy, you leave the belt with your title, right? Adonis Stevenson knows that. He's lucky to have gotten that tie with Badu Jack, right? He's still the champ. Badu Jack has to live with the fact that Adonis Stevenson is still the champ, right? Tie goes to the champ. Now, I know Tony... Did some great things at heavyweight. Beats David Hay twice. It's not Tony's fault that Hay has a bad Achilles. I'll agree with that. But wow, folks. He was in the ring with an undisputed cruiserweight champion. He was in a ring with the guy who just won the Ali Trophy for the division. I know the champ, well, we'll just put it this way. He was in the ring with the cruiserweight champion. I know the fight was in the UK, not the Ukraine. Okay, fair enough. I'll concede that. But even in the UK, wasn't Tony the challenger in this fight? Wasn't the burden on Tony? going into the fight to prove to us that he deserved to take the champion's title, right? Usyk might not be a big figure at heavyweight. He's a huge figure at cruiserweight, right? Understand unified champions just have more than one belt. When you say undisputed champion, when you say this man has all of the belts, you cannot call anyone else in the division champion. Right? The fact that Usyk too, Olympic gold medalist, unbeaten fighter. Right? The fact that Usyk's unbeaten should have conveyed to us that Tony had to take his title. Right, So when I'm watching rounds, I'm really watching them from the idea of, gee, has Tony done enough here to convince us that he's won the last three minutes? Right, It's a daunting task. Now I know, theoretically, neither man enters the ring with the title. Theoretically, at the beginning of a fight, it's 0-0. Zero, zero. Theoretically, whoever wins the fight wins the fight, right? In, I don't believe that's the way the real world operates. I believe you know who the champion is going into the fight, unless it's one of these fluky deals where you have two unbeatens, right? The WBC champion, Deontay Wilder, the lineal heavyweight champion, Tyson Fury, and they're getting together. Right here, Usyk is the guy who was the undisputed cruiserweight champion. So, I'm watching the fight. Let's just say I, I thought Tony would have to, you know, do stuff to move closer to taking Usyk's title. Now, as I saw the fight live, Right? I just looked at the compu box this morning after reading the comments to the earlier video. As I saw the fight live, I just thought Usyk, this is out the gate. 
I just thought Usyk was just too fast for Tony, right? Especially his feet. Usyk is moving where he wants to move. Tony's not cutting off the ring on Usyk. Usyk's cutting off the ring on Tony. Usyk's fooling around with his hand. He's not quite throwing a jab. He's more waving the hand like this. And Tony's the one who has to flinch, who has to react to it. Right? Not much happens to me in the first round, but as I saw it live, I really wasn't going by punches landed. I was going by ring generalship. You know, who's doing what they want to do? Who's taking the other one further out of their game? I thought Tony wanted a shootout with Usyk. I thought Usyk just wanted to move Tony around the ring and look at angles. I thought Usyk was the person who got his way in that first round. I didn't think either guy landed a lot of shots. Let's go to the compu box. Now, many of you believe, especially the group, obviously, that has Tony winning the first three rounds, that Tony won that first round. Understand, in the first round, according to CompuBox, Tony throws 23 punches and lands one punch. One. Right? Usyk throws 20 punches. This is the only round, by the way, in the entire fight where Tony throws more punches than Usyk. Usyk throws 20 punches. Usyk lands three. Right? Three. So I know to many of you it's self-evident. Tony wins the first round. Right? Folks, I'm just telling you there's another point of view. Usyk's the champ who really, because he's champion, gets the benefit of the doubt. Usyk lands three times more punches than Tony in that first round. Right? I'm not saying, <laughs> granted, one guy lands one, one guy lands three. I'm not saying it's a dominant round by either guy. Right? I'm not saying that at all. But understand, if you get ten people in a room and they see this round and it's low on action and one guy is just fainting and the other guy is moving backwards. One guy wants a brawl, but there's real, really no exchange. I believe the scoring is going to be split on the first round. Right? Let me disagree here with the folks who think that Tony clearly wins the first round. Right? I'm going to disagree. Now, let me concede one fact here. The three punches that Usyk lands are jabs. Tony lands the only power punch in the round. So I could see people focused on power punching thinking, okay, Tony won the round. Can we at least agree that this first round is less than convincing? So then we get to the second round. Right? Again, many of you believe Tony's in control early in the fight. I'm just asking where that is on the compu box. Tony throws 29 punches in the second round. He lands eight. Usyk throws 34 punches in the second round. He lands 10. Right? Can we agree that neither guy is staggered or cut or getting a count in the second round? In other words, the second round, again, is a beauty contest. Now, what I noticed in that second round was Usyk's movement was such that he was getting to the right of Tony. I believe the second round is the first time where Usyk ends up behind Tony. I thought Usyk was the one determining the angles, right? Usyk also seems to pick parts of rounds where he just decides he's going to back you up to the ropes. And I thought Usyk seemed to have a bigger impact on where the fighters were standing than did Tony. Right? But here again, understand, we're not throwing darts. Right? <laughs> the copy box doesn't support the notion that Tony Bellew started this fight in dominant fashion. Right? We get to the third round. Let me retract the statement I made earlier. I said the first round is the only round where Tony throws more punches than Usyk. That's true. 
In the third round, though, Tony does land more punches than Usyk. Right? Tony throws 36 punches. He lands 11. Usyk throws 60 punches. Yes, the volume gap is that big. Usyk throws 60 punches and lands 10. Right? That round also isn't a clear-cut Tony round. Right? It's just not. Now, I'll agree. Let me concede this here. Tony lands nine power shots in the third round. Usyk only lands four. I'll agree with that. But Usyk lands six jabs. Tony only lands two. The rest of the fight really isn't that close. Fourth round, Usyk lands 15 punches. According to CompuBox, Bellew lands eight. Fifth round, Usyk lands 17 punches. Tony lands nine. Sixth round, Usyk lands 15 punches. Tony lands nine. Seventh round, well, by this point, I believe even the Tony people understand the fight's gotten away from them. Usyk lands 23, Tony 11. Then we get to the last round. Usyk lands 19, Tony lands 4. Right, so let's talk about what's really going on. I believe this discussion has to take place when you're talking about every Canelo fight in Las Vegas. Right, Tony is charismatic. There's no question about it. As you're watching a Tony fight, Tony's doing things like talking to his opponent. The bell sounds at the end of the round and Tony looks indignant. And he talks to his opponent. He steers. He tries to steer at least at Usyk after a couple of rounds. But Usyk's a professional type. He just kind of looks away and goes to his corner. Right? I believe in boxing we're caught up in much more than the fight itself. Right? We're caught up in the event, aren't we? So this is Tony fighting at home, right? This is Tony letting the favorite, and let's be clear here, Usyk's not just the favorite in the fight, he's the undisputed champion. He's letting his opponent know, hey man, you're nothing to me. You're going to have to prove yourself to me. You're going to have to beat me here today. And I feel we get caught up in the emotion and we start giving rounds to guys in which, as Tony did in the first round, the fighter actually only lands one punch. I agree with those who say CompuBox is not perfect, but let's just say, folks, as you look at your scorecard, let's both be honest with each other. The people who believe Usyk won the fight, the folks who believe Tony was winning the fight, right? That includes two of the three judges. Let's be honest with ourselves. There's not a lot of action in the first three rounds. Right? And it's not clear cut. It's simply not clear cut. That either of these guys wins all of those rounds. Right? So, just food for thought as you leave comments on the earlier fight, and I hope you continue to do so, if you want to explain why you feel Tony was winning the fight convincingly, right? This is against a huge figure in boxing, right? An undisputed champion, right? If you feel Tony was winning the fight convincingly, doing enough without marking Usyk's face, without knocking Usyk down, without even outlanding Usyk. If you feel Tony was doing enough in the early rounds to actually warrant taking Usyk's title, let's say had the fight been a four-round fight instead of a 12-round fight, then share those thoughts with us in the comments section of this video. Let me say this too. <clears throat> the scoring thing right now, um, I'm not saying scoring was great in the 70s, 80s, 90s. I'm not. 
right? I'm not saying the judges were qualitatively better back then. I'm not. But what I am saying, let me be clear here, is we've had some big fights recently where you look at the scorecards and you just don't know what the judges are seeing. Right? The Gerald Washington, Deontay Wilder fight. Folks, look, I concede Wilder won that fight, right? He wins it by KO. I concede he won the fight. But wow, I, I can't spot a round in that fight before the knockout where one can even plausibly consider giving Wilder the round. Right? I feel the same way about the Luis Ortiz fight. Now, we lucked out in that Wilder stops Ortiz because had that fight gone the distance and had they, you know, had they somehow ruled that Wilder won that fight by decision, that would have been a travesty. I know I was here online talking about the Joseph Parker, Anthony Joshua fight. I, I firmly believe that if that fight was in New Zealand, Joshua no longer has his title. Right? In terms of scoring a fight, don't you look at a fight like that and say to yourself, gee, you know, Joshua is a guy who enjoys throwing a big straight right hand. Where is Joshua's right hand in this fight. Don't you say that? Right? The judges didn't. The scorecards of late have been a bit wide. Some of the judges, Adelaide Bird comes to mind. I, I, I'm, I'm mystified how she continues to be picked as a judge in big fights. In fact, that Parker-Joshua fight is equally mystifying as to how that referee, a guy I, I'd never heard of before, a guy I haven't seen since, shows up in a heavyweight unification title fight. Right, So I do think the boxing community has to have an ongoing discussion about the scoring. Even in fights like this, where the winner wins by KO, everyone agrees Usyk wins the fight. Everyone agrees on that, right? I'm just saying in a fight like this, it would be good to have the judges explain why two of them, in a fight where Tony only throws more punches than his opponent in one of the rounds, right? Why two of them don't have Usyk winning the fight, right? Let me also say, too, in fairness to the judges, many folks here online saw the same fight they did. Now, boxing is an expectation game, right? I believe people look at fights and they say, oh, this guy, Tony's doing better than I expected. Isn't the real question whether Tony is actually doing better than his opponent in the round? Whether Tony has done enough for me to say, I, I give Tony this round and move him this much closer to taking this champion's title. Anyway, I think it's a good discussion. I urge everyone to read the comments and the thumbs up given those comments in the comment section to my earlier video. I'll agree, I'll concede here. Most people did not see the fight the way I did, right? I'll concede that, right? Former heavyweight champ, David Hay, former cruiserweight champ. Let's remember, David Hay was cruiserweight champ. David Hay, future boxing hall of famer, Carl Frotch, they saw the fight like you saw the fight. Let's all try to reconcile that with the copy box numbers as well as replays of past fights. I cannot tell you how many times I've looked at a replay of a past fight and the replay just looks different than how I remembered it. 
right? Um, revisit Felix Trinidad against Oscar De La Hoya. Right at the time we talked about Oscar running the last three rounds of that fight, folks. Revisit that fight. Anyway, that's how I see it. Let me hear from you. The copy box numbers for this Usyk fight can be found at boxingscene.com. Just Google them and let us know your thoughts. Thanks for stopping by.